In the studio with me is Makarini Rupene. Makarini is with ECAN, and of course it is Conservation Week. Makarini is a regular here at uh, Compass CFM. So uh, welcome uh, back, uh, Makarini. Great to see you. Kia ora, John. Nice to be back. Kia ora to you. And uh, Makarini, you are the, um, well, basically your, your job description involves Po Matai Ko, cultivating and understanding uh, Mahinga Kai in the uh, Northern Environment Canterbury area, yeah? Yeah, that, that's correct. So I, my role is to go out and, and work with um, land owners and um, industry groups in getting their knowledge and around understanding what Mahinga Kai is and the importance of having that um, on farm or on the land use and the role it plays in the ecosystem and the environment. Okay, now I'm going to ask you all about Mahinga Kai shortly, but first yeah. I'm going to ask you about Makarini Rupane, if you don't mind, mate. Tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, where are you from and, and, and when did you become so interested in conservation, that sort of thing? Yeah, kia ora, kia ora John. Um, so I, I grew up around uh, Tuahiwi and Kaipoi, so I, I come from the local pa. And from a very young age, um, I, I was taught mahinga kai and how to hunt and gather out in our environment and the special relationship that's needed to um, to, to understand the ecosystems. So from a very young age, um, out there doing it and getting a really good understanding of, of our um, natural world. So when you look at the uh, topography of North Canterbury, you must see it with very different eyes but, to me as a Pākehā because, you know, it's in, it's in your culture. Yes. And you look at the hills and the mountains beyond and they all have some significance to you, don't they? That, that, that is correct. We say kia to katai, from the mountains to the sea. And from a very young age, probably about 10 years old, um, I was taught and shown how we had um, lost a lot of our natural environment. We'd lost a lot of our forestry, um, our, our native plants and our wetlands. And knowing how important they were for us as um, mana whenua or people of the land and the connection and relationship that we have with those key ecosystems. So it's always been a, a drive for me in life um, to be a kaitiaki, uh, a, a guardian to look after our environment and our world. Who taught you, <coughs> excuse me, what you know uh, when you were a child? Uh, yeah, so I spent a lot of time with um, the older, our older people, um, the older aunties, the uncles, uh, my pa, which is my grandfather, as well as my father and cousins growing up just out there on the in the environment, on the river, on the lakes, up in the back hills, just doing it. Yeah, mahinga kai. Now, now, what is that? So Mahinga Kwai is, it's, uh, it's about understanding your world and your natural resources. And it's about having that relationship and seeing how they all interconnect and and play a special part for the environment. Um, so for us, we say Mahinga Kai, working the food, working the natural resource. And it's just like anything. It's about having that relationship, that understanding. If, you're, um, if you are a farmer or you grow produce, you have that relationship with your soil. So to get the best out of your soils, you understand what needs to go into them, your root systems, your, your insects, your sunlight and water. Yeah. Well, the Māori were hunter-gatherers, right? Yes. And, and you depended on the land and the natural resources uh, for your kai, for That's your food. Yeah. What is out here in North Canterbury, pre-Pākehā, that we can eat? Uh, we still have a lot of the, the kai here. We have, um, we have our tuna, our... our um, Native fish species like the the uh, inaka, which is white bait, uh, we have kahawai, uh, flounders. Um, there's all our shellfish. There's our power. There's um, crayfish. There's sea fish. Um, we still have an abundance. There's our, our um, different puha and and different um, native plant species. Puha. What is it? Uh, puha is a sow thistle, so we've got about a couple of species here in in New Zealand, and it's it's a very sweet. Um, weed and you, you you caress it and you boil it and you can have it in salads or uh, you can have it raw or you can have it with boiled boiled vegetables and, and other meat. Mm-hmm. To coke uh, the cabbage tree, Yes. Uh, which part of that was edible? Uh, so there's a few different parts but um, the tokoka was normally around the root base was taken out and it was then put into a, an umu where it was baked for a good up to five plus days to get that sweetness to make it into like a sugar base and then it could be worked into different food okay and that was that was pretty much a staple too wasn't it it was yeah and fern yep. roots yep yep all that sort of thing so yeah. uh, all this kai is still with us but of course uh, all the birds are off limits now yeah uh, but of course the birds would have made up a huge part of your ancestors diet that they that's correct as well that they and also um 
eating the seeds and then rejuvenating, regenerating those native plants all around the, the different habitats and waterways. Yep. I'm an urban dweller, uh, Marcadini. How yep. can I encourage more native species into my garden? Uh, if you've got trees, they're a good start. Um, definitely plant natives um, and and then also set up um, bird houses and, and put out like um, sweet sugar water or, or lard for the birds to come and feed. Um, also, you may have noticed, I, I noticed during lockdown uh, COVID, the amount of native birds that started coming back just because there was um, a lot less traffic on the roads. Yeah. You could hear them, couldn't you? I yeah. Mean, you know, yeah. Definitely. It was a definite. It made a big difference. Speaking of uh, COVID, um, did the lockdown help increase awareness around conservation, do you think? I, I think it did. I think um, w- what we've seen from COVID is now we're having a lot of um, uh, projects coming available around um, conservation, around the environment, trying to re enhance it. Um, trying to to get these ecosystems back because we, we know that we've got to a, a point where it's we've lost a lot of our species they're becoming uh, close to extinct and one of them <clears throat> is the Canterbury mudfish now Mark Adini, I, I don't want to offend you here but this is a mudfish why do we care about a mudfish here yeah, well it's a very rare species um, Canterbury mudfish endemic to here to, to Canterbury and so for myself um, once upon a time it would have been used as a food resource not now because they're so rare and, and I work with different students around um, learning more about their habitat, their lifestyle, but also their genos, because uh, we're looking at some of the students I work with are doing their PhDs around if these uh, species become extinct, then we need their DNA to bring them back. Okay, that's amazing. What an amazing field. But of course, I, it was tongue in cheek, my comment about why would we care about a mudfish. <laughs> but of course, it's all part of the ecosystem. That's and correct. you go playing with that, then you throw the whole thing out of kilter, right? That's right. Yeah. 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 Mahinga... What projects have you got uh, coming up? Oh, we we have we have been uh, even during COVID, we've had a lot of projects on the go. So um, we're looking at in the Waipara River um, weeds and willow removal um, on the Hidanui River. We've got predator control, so we're looking at um, protecting the, the rye bulls, the black bill gulls, and taking out the, the mustelids, which are your rats, stoats, weasels, cats um, that have uh, predate on them and, and have really reduced the numbers. Um, around the, the Waimakariri, we were having a big plant day coming up for all the Ken staff. Um, and one of the projects I really love is uh, we're putting back in, in Kaipo, you've got the edible food forest. We're going to be working with Waimak District Council and the uh, Kaipo Tuahiwi Community Board and putting a Nahiri Rungwa, which is a, 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 like a Mahinga Kai forest back in with all your native plant species to um, also just to learn about what used to be there, how we used, utilise them for medicines, eating, but also giving habitat back to our bird life. So one of the areas we've got uh, set up to look at putting this back in is an old wetland area, so it will fit in really nice right into that area. And also this coming Friday, um, I'm working with one of the uh, industry groups and we're just having a bit of a mahinga kai uh, field, field visit. And I'm just explaining to them about um, how, how to look at things and how to work with their industry and their their um, farmers when it comes to mahinga kai and what that looks like under new legislations. And we've also got the uh, wetland um, resource projects coming into play as well, which was about now protecting our wetlands because we've lost so many of them. Yeah, getting back to the Hurunui River and the, the attack on the, the weasels, the stoats, the ferrets, the cats, that sort of thing. Is that a winnable battle? I, I believe it is. Uh, we've just got to just got to keep it keep it up and we've got uh, people out there working on it and monitoring it over and over. So yeah, we, because, need, to, we I mean, need to keep on top. Just so destructive, aren't you know, yeah, they? Yeah. It's something we've got to get on top of. Yeah, and so it's, it's done through trapping um, out that area. Yep. yep. Anyone listening now who would like to perhaps get involved uh, with anything to do with, uh, you know, Ikan, what or Mahinga Kai, would like to more information, that sort of thing. Um, Makarini, how do they get in touch? Yeah, yeah. So they just need to contact the Environment Canterbury. Um, go through the comms and look to see what's available and how they can be involved. So we've got a few planting days coming out on different different stretches of the um, retributaries trees that feed onto the Waimakariri. Brilliant, mate. Always good to see you, Makariri. Is there anything else you wanted to really push today or get across? Um, no, it's just... We're pretty well covered, Yeah, we, it's, yeah. A, it's just nice to see the sun and, <laughs> and um, it's always good if we can look after our environment and, and cherish it. Yeah, well, it's Conservation Week, but I reckon every week should be Conservation Week, yeah. that's for sure. Always good to see you, mate. I could talk to you for hours, I really could, but we'd better play some music. This is Compass CFM.